Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tamar and today we're going to do something out of the comfort zone, let's say. <laughs> we are going to create a Christmas gnome together. You can download the patterns that I'm going to use in the description of the video so you can follow along. And if you do it, don't forget to share it with us in social media. We would love to see what you do with this. And take it as a Christmas challenge <laughs> because you're going to learn a lot of techniques that you can use and apply in all different projects that you're working on. Okay, let's begin. And I will start by dragging and dropping my pattern piece, my DXF, here in my window. In any window, it does not matter. I will leave it in millimeters and OK. And here I have basically the pattern that we are going to use. I build it in Clo and I place the name of the pattern in each one of them so you can actually use it as a reference. Okay, I will unfold my pattern pieces using the Edit Pattern tool. Right click, Unfold with Symmetry. I will do the same for the bottom, so I will have one bodies and one bottom. I will change my particle distance to 5 because these are really small pattern pieces, so that will give me already a good start. I will select all of them, deactivate them because I want to build this step by step and I will start with the body and the bottom of my knob. So I will bring these two pattern pieces here to one side, right click and activate and I would like to see what is the wrong side and the right side of the fabric. For that I will need to change the way I view my fabric here in the toggle bar. I will select the thin texture surface so I can place my pattern pieces in the right way. And I will need to duplicate this, so I will Control c Control v to copy and paste it. And now we need to sew it together. I will select the Segment Sewing tool in the 3D window. And here we have a long segment that we want to join to two smaller segments. So I will use the 1 to M function, meaning I will select the longest segment, press Shift, and select the smaller segments. For the sides, I have just clean segments, so I will just click and click, the same for the top. I really like to use the segment sewing tool in the 3D window, it makes everything so much easier. Simulate and then let's add some fabrics. I would like to use wool, so I will drag and drop it into my object browser. And I would like to have a lighter color, so I will desaturate the texture for now. Uh, so I can add a more neutral fabric to my project. Now let's strengthen these pattern pieces. So I will select all of them, right click, strengthen and simulate. So they inflate a bit more, but the actual trick here is to use pressure. So with my pattern selected, I will go to the property editor and increase the pressure of my fabric. And you will notice that it will be inflated when I increase this number. Okay, now I have my starting point, so I would like to have actually a more flattened bottom. To achieve this, I will freeze the upper part of my body and I will use it and I will bring it down in order to push my bottom down when I simulate. So I stop the simulation, drag it down and simulate again until you have the desired shape. If you would like to have a super flattened button that is actually easier because you could freeze the button before sewing this together and that will keep everything super flat. I froze the bottom and unfroze the, the body so that will not move anymore and let's continue with the arms. Here I have my pattern so I will select them and let's bring it down and right click to activate them. Now I would like to sew this arm to the body of the gnome, so I will need to have an internal line here where I want the sewing. So for that I will use the 3D pen garment, so I will select it, click to start, go through the pattern pieces and double click to end. The length for now is not important for me because it does not make any big difference. Now I will trace it as internal line, so I need to have the edit 3D pen right click and trace an internal line, right click and duplicate in symmetric pattern. So I have now my internal lines where I'm going to sew my um, the arms. Okay, I will bring it closer and place it with the wrong side facing the outside. And I would like to fold it in half, so I will 
draw an internal line using the internal polygon tool. Click to start, double click to end. And in the 3D window, we can use the fold arrangement tool to actually fold this line just a bit. And now we can sew it. I will use the second sewing tool in the 3D window again in the same, the same procedure. I will also close the arm on the top and on the side. And we can quickly simulate this, stop the simulation. And now let's go with the hands. So I will need another pattern piece. In this case, I will need to copy and mirror paste it. And I will sew it to the arm here in the 2D window. And I can superimpose side in the 3D window. And we can close the hands completely now and simulate. Now we select the three, the three pattern pieces and add pressure to them, simulate. And I would like to reduce the distance between the pattern pieces, between the fabrics. So I will select all of them and go to the property editor and reduce the thickness collision to one. Now to get the other arm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the pattern pieces, right click and we're going to clone with symmetric editing with sewing or control D in your keyboard. And that is going to give me an exact mirror copy of my pattern pieces in the same shape. So I don't have to repeat the process again. Okay, let's continue with the hat. I will select the pattern piece, bring it down, right click activate. And in this case, I would like to give it a bit of shape before I actually um, sew it. So I will place a pin on the top and pins on the corners. Activate the simulation and move it to give it a more rounded shape. And now we can sew it with the second sewing tool, click and click. And I will actually delete this point, these pins before I simulate. Now we like to strengthen the pattern piece and I will place a pin on this side and a pin on this other side so I can open my hat. And now with the simulation off, I can move the whole hat so I can give it more, a bit more of shape and bring it a bit down. So I will move it closer to my body, simulate, stop the simulation, move it a bit down, simulate and so on until I have just a nice location for it. We are going to work more in the hat later on once we have the nose. Okay, we are almost done. <laughs> Let's continue with the shoes. And for this, we need the other side of this pattern piece here. So I will right click copy, right click mirror paste. So I will have the complete pattern pieces that I need for the shoes. And I will bring it down, right click activate. And now we are going to arrange them as they should be, making sure that the wrong side of the fabric is facing each other. Okay, now I will freeze the button and we are going to sew this together the same process. So here, click and click. I will do it in the 3D window using the segment sewing tool. Close my shoes together. Simulate, stop the simulation, strengthen the pattern pieces and simulate again. Now we need space for this. So I will select all the upper part of my norm, bring it up and select the shoe and bring it below my, my gnome. Now we continue with the leg. We will need these two pattern pieces here. I will right click activate and bring it to the side. So this first pattern piece is going to be like a bone structure. I'm not going to really manipulate it or anything. I will just freeze it and keep it there. That will help keep my leg in place. So I will put it like in the shoes and I can arrange my gnome. So it will go up in the shoes and then I can arrange my gnome so I can put it up or down and decide how high do I want this gnome to be. Now let's bring the leg. So I will place it here on the side and I need to sew it here on the on the top. So I need a circle with the size of the pattern piece. So I can so I can use the edit pattern tool 
to know what is the size of the circle that I need, go to the internal ellipse, one click, and I will place here under circumference the size of my of the upper part of my of my leg. And now I can sew it together. For this I will use the free sewing tool. I will select the whole line and the whole circle and simulate. Now to close it, I will recommend you to do it step by step. So I will sew one part of it, change to the edit sewing tool and bring it down one by one and simulating in between until we sew the whole leg. And now we want to sew it to the shoe itself with the same tool, free sewing tool. I will use that blue dot that we have in the 3D window to guide myself where to start and where to end. And I will press shift and sew all of these pattern pieces together. And I would like to have a more drapey leg. So I will increase the length of my pattern piece on the top slowly and simulating in between until I have the desired shape. And now I can select all of those pattern pieces, right click and clone symmetric pattern with sewing and I will have the other leg done. Okay, now we are definitely almost done. <laughs> Let's continue with the nose and for that I will like to draw a small circle, like a really really small circle because I want to add a lot of a thickness to it. So I will just eyeball it and we can reduce it or increase it. That is not a problem. So I will bring it here and I will change the view to thick texture surface so I can see all the texture of my garment. Bring the particle distance super low, like to one, and I will increase the thickness rendering to 40, 50. You can, you can test it. So now I have a really rounded shape. And the problem with this shape, okay, this is too big. Let me <laughs> bring a bit down. The problem with this shape is that although I will freeze it, my hat, it will not collide with the whole shape because the thickness collision rendering is not uh, offering me the collision. So if I want to shape the hat around the nose, I will need that collision. What I can do is that I can export this as an OV8 and bring it back to my project. And that is what we are going to do. With the nose selected, go to File, Export, OVJ Selected, put a name to it, Save, and we're going to keep everything as a default. That works fine for this. And now we are going to import it back. So go to Import, OVJ, select the OVJ, and we are going to add it. That is really important here, add it to our project, and there we have it. And it's going to be in the same position where we save it. So I will delete the pattern piece because we don't need it anymore. And I will place the OVJ where I want it. And I will activate the collision here in the property editor. So now you will notice that your garment is going to collide with it. And that is what we wanted. Now we can really shape this hat. And for that, I will unstrengthen my pattern piece and use pins. And once we have it in a shape we want, we can freeze it together with the body. Now we are going to draw a shape in the place where we want the beard to be. And that is what we are going to do using the polygon line tool. Click to start, click here, control to make curves, click here. And I will actually close my shape because I want to trace that. So I can move it and arrange the shape as I want it to be. And then we can right click clone as pattern piece. We are going to unfold it with symmetry and sew it to the shape we draw. Lower the particle distance, reduce the thickness collision, and we're going to superimpose over. Simulate quickly and we are going to continue working on it. So for this, I would like to have another fabric. So I will copy this one and apply it to this uh, pattern piece and under type of material we are going to select fur. In our forum you are going to find this uh, really detailed guideline on how you can modify the properties of the fur to achieve different results. We're going to go through it. It's a lot of experimentation and testing but feel free to follow along and let's go back to our project and we need to go directly to the render. 
and I would like to bring back the color of my fabric so I can differentiate it from the hair of the fur and I would also like to go to the fabric where I have the fur applied and change the back and the side so it's not the same as the front so I don't have fur on the side and on the back of my pattern piece so I will select it and place it back to fabric mat and we came back to the front and we start working in changing some parameters of our fur and one thing that I really like when working with fur is to bring to the extreme the default number of it for example here I will go under gravity and the default is 10 so I will place it 1 so I can actually see how this property is going to affect my results so I can take more accurate decisions so here I would like more a more middle point so I will put it in 5 so you can follow this way for the properties that you don't know exactly what how they affect your garment just keep in mind that fur is really heavy and your computer is going to struggle a lot especially if you're working in a big pattern piece so if you have like a garment and you want to apply fur to it i recommend you to do this process in a really small pattern piece and when you have the desired result you can save your preset and apply it to the bigger garment okay now i'm happy with the result i will go back to my simulation and for textures, I would like to hide all these colors that I have here. So I right click on the space and show, um, hide all. And now I won't see if a pattern piece is uh, frozen or strengthened. And I will create one fabric for each print that I want to add to my, to my norm. I will apply it to the different pattern pieces and will use the edit texture tool to actually make the prints of some part of my of my norm. In the description of the video, you're going to find the tutorials that we have that will walk you through all the process of how the edit texture tool work. You can use it if you want. You can bring your own textures if you have it. Just go crazy and give the norm your own touch in the colors you apply to it. And after we finish this, we are going to stage it. So I will show you some tricks there as well. And after that, you're going to be free. I promise you, just hang on for some seconds more. And my gnome is ready. <laughs> seconds, I told you. I will bring back to the colors and I will add this background that I built. So I will add it to my workspace. That is really important. You know that, right? How many times did you open it and close your last project? That happened to me a lot. <laughs> okay, my background is here already. And here I have some things that I want to show you. First, I have another knob that I made in another height. And you will see that all of the things that I have, especially these big, big pattern pieces, are deactivated. So this is really helpful because my project is going to be lighter my computer is not going to struggle too much because they don't have any collision. I also have a really high particle distance applied to it, 600, that is the maximum that we have. And all of the things that I don't need to interact with are completely deactivated. That is my big tip here, especially when working with super large uh, projects. So now I will go to the render and that is our final line. So you are officially over with this tutorial. We made it. <laughs> I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and that you learn a lot of tricks to help you elevate your close skills. Don't forget to subscribe, to comment if you would like to see more videos like this and see you next time. Bye.